In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We are joyful to, to join all our brothers and sisters who are shut-ins with all the people who take care of them as we join to pray together, celebrating the 12th Sunday in ordinary time. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the Christ of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you suffered and died and rose on the third day. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Savior of the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, I will pour out on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and petition, and they shall look on him whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourns for only son and they shall grieve over him as one grieves over a firstborn. On that day, the morning in Jerusalem shall be as great as the morning of Hadarim in the plain of Megiddo. On that day, there shall be open to the house of David and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem a fountain to purify from sin and uncleanliness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, through faith, you are all children of God in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free person. There is not male and female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's descendant, heirs according to the promise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Once when Jesus was praying in solitude and the disciples were with him, he asked them, who do the crowds say that I am? They said in reply, John the Baptist, others, Elijah, still others, one of the ancient prophets has arisen. Then he said to them, but who do you say that I am? Peter said in reply, the Christ of God. He rebuked them and directed them not to tell this to anyone. He said, the son of man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. Then he said to all, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends in God, we each experience grace-filled, defining moments in our lives, watershed moments where once and for all, we resolve important questions we've pondered, bedrock moments, when we make a clear choice to live in a certain way no matter what. These foundational choices define how our lives will unfold and how we'll be known. Today, we're reminded of how God must be intimately involved in the timing and the circumstances of these moments. Do you remember when Moses was instructed to hold the staff and wait for the Lord's instruction before striking the rock, releasing the life-giving water of Meribah? He chooses to go ahead of God, and in turn, he will bring the people to the promised land, but yet will not be allowed to enter into it. Today's Old Testament reading offers an interesting view of the pathway which grace can take to be released into our lives. Through the prophet Zechariah, the Lord states that the house of David is to first receive a spirit of grace and petition. Then they shall look upon him who was pierced and mourn and grieve. And in turn, a fountain to purify sin and uncleanliness would be released to all. Today's gospel reveals a bedrock moment for the apostles, the Holy Catholic Church, and for you and I. The watershed event impending in the apostles' lives is the passion of Christ. Jesus has spent time alone in prayer, pondering his passion, and now must bring these truths to light to his apostles. And the apostles wrestle mightily with this difficult reality, just as the people of God quarreled at Meribah, even though God's holiness was within them. However, in doing so, for the very first time, Peter sees Jesus as the Christ of God. Peter confesses this eternal truth, both with his lips and his identity, will now be defined as the rock that our church is built upon. Peter's identity is cast in the light of who he is in relationship with Jesus. Our church is built on Christ. 
He is the author and the original foundation. Peter's grace-filled re realization to this eternal truth is given by God, not a conclusion that he or any one of us could ever logically come to. Peter and the apostles arrive at this moment by walking side by side with Christ, by praying with him, by experiencing his love firsthand. So the defining question that Jesus asks of his apostles, he also asks of us, who do you say that I am? While we may sometimes have our doubts, the question penetrates our souls like a double-edged sword, chipping away the scale of sin so lovingly to reveal the beauty of a pure heart that only God can create. And through a spirit of grace and petition, we too can experience a fountain to purify us from sin. And gazing into the sanctuary, we look upon him whom we have pierced with our sins and transgressions as we confidently confess in the silence of our hearts and our spoken words that Jesus is the Christ of God, we come to a deeper realization of who we are. We're placed as another stone at the enduring foundation of Mother Church, and as we pick up our cross daily with Christ, his church is made even stronger. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to worship for the dead and the love for the world to come. Amen. We present before you, God, our prayers with faith and trust. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis and our bishops, that they may continue to proclaim the truth of the divinity of Christ by their words and their works. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For nations where people suffer discrimination on account of their gender, race, age, or class, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering from physical pain, that they may unite their sufferings to Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those listening to the, this televised Mass, that they may be made holy today and their needs be supported by those who love them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for our deceased relatives and friends, that they may come to share in the fullness of life in heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of Jesus Christ, we praise you and adore you in his holy sacrifice. Keep us under the shadows of your wings and grant the prayers we have made through Christ our Lord.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the good and glory of his name. For our good and the good of all. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation. We may make offering of a heart pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her beloved spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, 
who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance to your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to be called my mother, but I only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
May the Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Thank you.